Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Kay Murray, Shaka Hislop, Craig Burley and Nadem Anua here to answer your questions. We'll get started straight away. First question, Craig. Should Conte move Son to the bench? Hmm. No. Why would you move a guy that's been your best player along with Harry Kane for, I don't know. A very long time. Now, you, I, I presume you're talking about the, might be something to do with the Marseille game. Because I didn't watch that game. It was one of the games on the screen, but Dan and I decided we, 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 uh, what did, what's, what's what I'm I think, for? I think it might be the zero um, goals this yeah. season. Yeah, well, yeah. Doesn't make you a bad player, does it? No. No. We had that game on. Right. But it wasn't a priority. Okay, all right, all right. I, I know how that works. I'm, I'm with Craig. I, I, I don't, I don't see the reason to. Um, the old cliche, especially around, around goal scorers, is it's just a matter of time. They want to get one. It, they, you know, it, it kind of opens the, the floodgates, and I, I expect the same to, to be with with him and Son. I see absolutely no reason to leave him on. Do you agree, Nadem? Um, kind of, but I suppose the pressure's coming because Richarlison's on the bench and Richarlison's coming on and having like a major impact. So for Son, when you see that he's not really scoring those goals, I think for Conte it's a big decision as to is he doing everything else really well? Because on the bench there's somebody who seems more dynamic at this moment in time and who is having a bigger impact. But it w does feel crazy to think about Son not starting for Spurs, but it seems like they end up getting a good deal with Richarlison. It seems like a very, very able backup should Son drop to the bench. For City TV Nadem, <laughs> what are your areas of concern this season as a City fan? Is it the defence? Is it the defence? Um, I was, I'm like everybody else, I think we've been surprised by how many goals they've conceded early on in this season and they have shown some element of weakness. But then I suppose the positives are they've been able to come back in those games and they scored a ton of goals, you know, they've scored so many to this point. But yeah, maybe the, maybe the defensive side of things is a concern, but I think when you look around the league, there aren't that many teams who people still don't think they can get get at. So whatever they feel about City, maybe they feel that towards Liverpool now. Maybe they think they might be able to get something against Spurs. Maybe they feel they can get something against Arsenal. So ultimately, I don't think it's going to be to City's detriment that much. I think when people do come back and they are fit, it's more competitive and I imagine they'll get more into a groove. But as a concern, you know, everything, they're still involved in everything. They're poised. They've got players playing well. They've got players to come back in. So, you know, being in a position that they're in now, it's not the end of the world. So, City TV says everything is looking up for Man City. <laughs> uh, that was your City TV spokesman, Nadem Anua. For Shaka, Newcastle TV spokesman, how many goals do you think Isak can score for Newcastle in the Premier League this season? Um, I have to say, I, I was really pleasantly surprised by, by the start. The way we took his goal. I know he had one disallowed as well. Um, between now and the end of the season, I think if Isak gets 15, that's a very good return. You think he can do it, 15? Yeah, I think he can get 15. Oh, we had an under or over of 12 the other day. And well, I'll tell you what, if we have an, we an under and over of 12 for £70 million, dollars, whatever it is, euros, pesetas... Stop <laughs> complaining about price, guys. <laughs> if if we are having an over and under of 12 for a striker who they've paid a fortune for, then we've got a big problem. We, we can't be comparing with price tags anymore. I mean, the, the, the one that, that Frank always harps on is, is Cucurella. If he, he was, what, 70? If Cucurella is 70 million, then Isaac's 70 but if million. But if, well. so, if you're an over-under in 12, that's a struggle. Yeah. If you're but, a midfielder getting 12, yeah, decent season. I, I've, if you're a striker getting 12 and you've played a lot of games, not particularly good. I've, I've given up on... on criticising price tags because none of it makes Mind, any he's sense. A, he's an international footballer. Mind you, it turns out, as it turns out, uh, his goal against Liverpool, and almost two against Liverpool, what one was uh, inches offside, but his goal was fantastic. But mm. it turns out it's not as difficult to score against Liverpool as we thought <laughs> uh, earlier on in the season, our pre-season. We thought it was going to be a difficult task, but it turns out big Mr Van Dijk and his cronies are having a bit of a nightmare. So, 12, no, if you're a striker and it's 12, you're going to be looking at 20 plus. All right. Otherwise, you can pack your bags. Nadem, over or under 12 for Isak this uh, season? Yeah, I'm going to say over. I'm going to say over. I think 12 feels kind of low. I'm kind of with Craig on that. I think for the money they're sort of spending on him and what their hopes are for the season in terms of potentially finishing maybe top six, who knows? Like, you want your striker to score more than 12 goals, and I think they brought him in to do just that. I can see them maybe scoring 60 this season. If that's the case, then yeah, I think he'll be closer to 20. Mm. 
Craig, how hard is the transition for Casemiro to go playing with Kroos and Modric to midfielders who are not at that level technically? Yeah, quite difficult. And I think he's also got an issue with his mobility at the moment and his fitness. Uh, he wasn't particularly good in the Sociedad game. McTominay's played before him. There's a fitness issue, of course there is. But yeah, it is difficult. It's difficult going from... It's not, it's not the same, but I had... When I went from Chelsea to Celtic, it was a good standard to a really good, really good standard to good standard. And then I found it myself when I moved from Celtic to Derby County and they were near the bottom of the Premier League and it was a younger squad and it was guys who'd been around. And the as soon as you turn up for training, you can see it. The standard is just not the same as where you've came from. And that's difficult because you need to adjust your game. Because the runners and the your people that you play with that are making the movement are not making the same movement, and so you start second guessing yourself. And then you might take a. And what I found was you start taking a couple extra touches because a striker. If you're playing with, say, at Celtic, playing with Henrik Larsson, one of the best in the business, and he's making all these great runs, and you play, and then you move to Derby County, and the forwards at that time were not doing the same and were struggling. It, it has an effect on you because you start doing things differently. Instead of just playing that ball in behind, just taking an extra touch and an extra touch and then you're getting caught on the ball. It is really can be a, a difficult problem to solve for some players. What's the City TV view on Casemiro at United so far then, Nadem? Um, I think when he was arriving, for most people, the sort of feel was that, well, the money must be really good because it seems a strange thing to do to leave Madrid for Manchester, but now, I think in that Sociedad game, I don't think it was brilliant, but I was seeing little bits that he was doing, maybe breaking up the play, making some of the decisions in terms of passing and stepping forward. And yeah, I guess he's going to be a good signing for them because it seems like there's a better sort of energy around Man United right now. And if he's playing in there week in, week out, and he can get used to the pace of the Premier League and the physicality of it, then of course somebody that's won five Champions League and is used to winning titles, winning lots of games every season, should benefit that group of players and benefit those fans who come in to try and see the team be successful again. Okay. Nadem, heading into the World Cup in a couple of months' time, are you concerned with the presumed starting backline for your England? Stones, Maguire, Trent Alexander-Arnold have not been in good form to start the season. Uh, my England? Uh, I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but anyway. Well, uh, Trent doesn't really play for England, so I don't see that as being much of a concern. Maguire not playing for Man United, I think that's potentially writing on the wall for him for this World Cup in the summer, provided they have somebody in there who they feel will do better than him. And like it, it's even though it's like two months away it's still not that close i think southgate has an idea of who he's going to be picking and what he wants from them so i wouldn't be too concerned at this moment and like i say the biggest one's probably the trend situation for as good a player as he is i look back at that third goal against um against napoli the other day and like that's one of the worst bits of defender i think i've ever seen so that's probably not going to help him out getting into that england squad especially when you've got the likes of reese james you've got kieran trippier you've got kyle walker who are currently i think for england ahead of him so, yeah, so the one, what the worry is though, one of them might have to play left back, because that's more good news. Because there's a guy called Luke Shaw, mm -hmm. and another one called Ben Chilwell, and they're not playing. Mm -hmm. Chelsea have signed, signed that guy. What is he? He's, 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 and uh, Stevie Nichols and needed. Man United brought in this young fella as a backup from uh, from Dutch football. I, be a backup, or oh, you might have to play. Right backs might have to, maybe have to play Trent at left back. Now, is this why you're not supporting England then in the World Cup, Nadem? Um, it sounded like I you were saying, no, my England, relax. I don't I think so. I didn't say that. I did not say I wasn't supporting them. But, but just to make it clear, I was born in Nigeria and unfortunately they're not at the World Cup. So yeah, I don't want to talk too much about England, but hopefully, you know, they do well because the players play in the Premier League, they play for clubs which I like and stuff like that. But I think for the left-back situation, if it goes that way, they'll probably do like they've done in the past and put Trippier to left-back. And that's a look which they've had before and been relatively successful with, even though it wasn't necessarily Southgate's first choice. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I hope they do well and I hope they get what they deserve if they play well. But, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. Well, the thing is, just have Maguire's out. They can bring Tyrone Mings. Oh, he's been out of favour at Aston Villa. Just got back in. Uh, Michael Keane. Oh, it's lots of good news. <laughs> You're an England <laughs> fan, so it's a good backline. Uh, Are they going to get out of the group? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I mean, Iran, the USA, and... Wales. Wales. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're going to get out of the group, they're yeah. not. He and, he and Stevie will be so happy if they don't, though. I know. As much as you say it's a confident yes from Craig, if they don't, it will be the funniest thing ever. But did oh. you not oh, hear how them, he's really worried about the back line? Could I you not worried. sense that? I, well, no, I didn't. I didn't sense that at all. <laughs> all right. I'm worried. <laughs> I, well, if they don't get out of the group, I, 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 I will be gutted. <laughs> I don't, I'm not Stevie. Stevie's very anti-English, you know. I'm not. I'm. I, I, we've both spent years and years and years in England, and I've let that bitterness wash off me. As it's still, it's, it's still on him. It's a, Yes, it is. All right. Shaka, I'll come to all of you on this, but I'll start with you. Did football clubs have leisure activities set up at the training facilities to encourage players to relax and build camaraderie around the, sw uh, the squad? Like pool tables, ping pong tables, card tables, chess boards, etc. Dallas had a, uh, FC Dallas had a table tennis board. That's the only club I've, I've been at that had something like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So the clubs didn't set it up, or would you? No. Would you have like card games and stuff, maybe? Well, we'd have card games on on, on the bus, on, on the bus, and, and flights. But that um, where the juice that, that the deteriorated because you know everybody had depending what club they were at. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I sat generally not right at the back, but not far off it. Where did you sit? Just you know, did you guys have like a middle partition in the bus you had? No. No. Oh. Middle, middle. In the middle? Yeah, just far enough away from the gaffer, not too <laughs> far away that I could throw some and annoy him. Do you all sit like where your positions are on the pitch? No, you sit with different people. <laughs> right. Yeah. It usually involves a card game or something. D down in the back was for the, for the rowdy bunch, the really is it, is rowdy it like bunch. The, is it like at school? Is oh, the cool absolutely. kids at the back? Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't one of the cool kids, or the rowdy kids as I put it. I was I just, I was, um, I was aspiring to be. So I didn't get all the way back. <laughs> I was just close enough, so I wasn't quite sure which department I was in. That's where I was. Oh, oh, so why were you in the middle? This my card school was there. That was okay. Yeah, fair enough. And it was, there was two, there was two coolers, one at the back and one at the front. <laughs> <laughs> and during the back, I wanted to be hedge my bets for the coolers, <laughs> so I could have yeah, beer on the bus. Both. Just in case, I kept my eye on people mm -hmm. still in the cooler. Uh, Oh, oh, that's what it was. You wanted to keep, make sure nobody stole. I tell you where I sat quite often. Box to I used box, to we call with, it, Shaka. I used to sit mm. on the way back when I was at Derby with the bus driver. At the front. <laughs> there was a little seat at the front. Yeah. <laughs> it's for the number two driver, if there's mm -hmm. two drivers. And I used to sit there chatting to the bus driver. It was more fun than talking to some of my <laughs> teammates. Some of his teammates. Yeah, yeah. And closer to the cooler at the front, of course. Cooler. Naden, ah. where did you sit? Well, this is this is a tale of my career. So when I was at QPR as captain, I sat at the back and I was deciding who would come and sit alongside me. Then for City, most of the time I was in the middle. But then when Mancini came, I sat at the front of the bus with the physios because we were the people who would be sitting on the bench and would not be getting any game time. So yeah, progressively <laughs> moving further and further forward <laughs> to the point where I got kicked off the bus and then I wasn't traveling. So yeah, very much tells the tale as the guys were saying. I was going to say, I'd say one of the best the ones bus. I ever had was right at the end of my career when I was just about to finish. And I went to Walsall for a couple of months. It was a disaster all round. I just, whatever, I won't go into the details. And we played at Preston North End. And I knew a lot of the lads at Preston. Uh, there were Scottish guys that I'd played with, Brian and Neil and a few others. So after the game, I went for a beer with them. Colin Lee was the Walsall manager, but he wasn't going home on the bus. This is in, he wasn't going back to Walsall on the bus. He was going off with his wife somewhere in his car. And I went to the bar to chit chat with the Preston lads. And I'm in there, blah, 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 and that comes out. There's no bus. <laughs> the bus has gone. It's heading back towards the uh, West Midlands, the Midlands. So I had to phone Colin, the manager, who's in the car with his wife, who had to phone the bus, and the bus had to do a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> but you were popular. Oh. <laughs> 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 that must have loved that. So I said to Colin, 
Do you, think, do you know where the bus is? He went, I left a good 15 minutes ago, Craig. I went, oh, right. He said, I said, so you think you reckon I've got time to go back in and have another pint then? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I wouldn't push it. <laughs> but the bus had to come back. Oh, when oh I, got, I can imagine. Oh, when I got on that bus, of course I played it out, then I get it, get it the big one. <laughs> the bus doesn't leave without me, you know that. I give it all that. Oh, they're throwing stuff in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> big time, Charlie. Uh, oh, I'm with you. But Nadam, just to go back to the question, obviously we went on to talk about the bus, but did, were you ever a football club where they did set up these activities to promote yeah. team camaraderie? Yeah, some places I went to had a bit of a players' lounge where you'd have things like pool, table tennis, there'd be tables for cards and stuff, because they wanted you to spend more time together and be social. Didn't necessarily always work, because there was one point in particular, this was early in my career, from 2005, we had a dartboard at Man City. And I think I had to get taken away because before you knew it, I think Joey Bart was throwing darts at people's legs. So yeah, that type of thing doesn't necessarily always work out for the best. But, you know, in theory, some people want to just get in and get off. So these rooms with pool tables and all that, sometimes all they do is just collect dust or one or two people use them only. I wonder where you'd all sit now on the bus. Well, same place. Same place. Three quarters of the way back. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, I wouldn't like being right out the back. Yeah, I don't like, no. You've got to position yourself. We'll have to see if Nadam would let us at the back, won't we? See this how you used to decide to Sarah and who's in. Uh, anyway, it's always a bit awkward when you're the new signing. Oh, yeah, I bet. I mean, if somebody sat in your seat, you were like that. Yeah, yeah. This is awkward. I'm going to have to put my foot down. <laughs> Depending on where I go to the spot. I think that's a, that's a universal lingo, isn't it? <laughs> Beat yep. it. Yep. Beat it. You're out. Damn, you know. The, the awkward walk of shame down the bus. All right, thanks so much for your time. better than Robbie Musto stealing my kit. That's a lot of, we know we've been through that story. <laughs> Robbie, if you're watching, it's not clear forgotten and that one. <laughs> clear and obvious. It's clear and obvious. Thanks so much for your tweets. Make sure to do it all again tomorrow because we'll be back Send at the same time. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.